Did you say it? The air for a day. Did you say it? I have decided to name a new heir. Men would sooner put the realm to the torch than see a woman ascend the Iron Throne. Game of Thrones has returned to relevancy with its recent spinoff, House of the Dragon. And I'll be honest with y'all, I didn't want to watch this show. I didn't think the show was going to be any good. I thought the Game of Thrones franchise died with season 8 and that was the punishment it deserved. For years, the show's quality had declined and fallen from grace. If season 8 was anything to go off of, having any hopes for a Game of Thrones spinoff would be a foolish one. But surprisingly, and delightfully so, I was wrong. Something I'm beyond happy to admit. House of the Dragon is everything Game of Thrones was at its best. I would even argue in certain areas it excels where Game of Thrones struggled for a bit. I can say confidently that if you were worried that House of the Dragon would repeat many of the same mistakes that Game of Thrones did, even the mistakes it made in its early run while still following the books, you've come to the wrong place. House of the Dragon will thoroughly exceed your expectations instead of subverting it. And let me tell you, after the latter half of the 2010s was cursed with that level of poor audience manipulating writing, this sincere, detailed filled show is a breath of fresh air. Why are we still here? 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 Just to suffer. And it may seem others feel that way as well. House of the Dragon is leading the charge in streaming numbers and critical reception of shows out this year. There is already a second season greenlit and multiple of the spinoffs are planned. Those spinoffs are Snow, a spinoff about Jon Snow after the events of Game of Thrones. The Sea Snake, a spinoff set before House of the Dragon about a young Corlys Valerian and how he built his family's wealth from his journeys across the world. 10,000 Ships, a spinoff about Princess Nymeria's journey to Dawn following a war with the Valerian set 1,000 years before Game of Thrones. The Hedge Knight, a spinoff about Sir Duncan the Tall and a young Aegon Targaryen. The, the fifth one, they like to name these guys the same name, it's, it's, it's a little weird. The Golden Empire, not much is known about this spinoff beyond the fact that it's an animated series set somewhere in Essos, so we could probably expect the Golden Company to be involved in some way, shape, or form. The success of House of the Dragon has resurrected the Game of Thrones franchise, poured in countless of new fans and millions of old fans into the fold, renewed interest in the books, and has even made many want to revisit the original series, despite the flaws of the later seasons. The success has also bled into the fandom of Game of Thrones, such as Song of Ice and Fire as well. Many YouTube channels, podcasters, TikTok accounts, and other social media platforms have now been dedicated to talking about the series, even from people who hated Game of Thrones in the later seasons, or who hated it long before season 8. But how is that possible? That's the question I've been silently asking myself since the series dropped to critical acclaim. I've been asking myself, can a franchise be saved? The final season of Game of Thrones was so terrible that the impact the series had on pop culture seemed to disappear overnight. A decade's worth of storytelling, gone. Yet now, in the year of our overlord Disney, they have returned to dominate the conversation of pop culture once again. Especially with episode 7 which had the quote you will be hearing in every fandom all over social media for the next years to come. History does not remember blood. It remembers names. How did they bring back the franchise from the punching bag of the internet rightfully deserved to a benchmark of quality writing, directing, acting, set design, production, certainly not lighting. Turn off the flash, you fucking moron. They did this by, well, they did this by listening to the audience, but it's not so simple. The Game of Thrones fandom was initially a lot of fans from the book series, A Song of Ice and Fire, by George R. R. Martin. And those who weren't fans of the books at first got into it because of the series. Yet as time went on and the series went further off the rails like a train conductor on his third line of nose candy and his second shot of gin in the morning, the fandom of Game of Thrones was beginning to change. Book fans weren't happy. Fans of the early seasons weren't happy. The only people who seemed to be happy, the ones that were mindlessly consuming the show, ignoring all of its flaws, the criticisms people had for it, and telling anyone who had a problem with how things were going that they were just being toxic, entitled, or annoying fanboys or girls. I wonder where I heard that before. The most vocal fanbase for Game of Thrones was no longer the fans who cared about the quality of the writing, or the integrity of the world, lore, characters, and the story, but the bandwagon fans who had been swept away by the hype, and the fans who were more invested in having Game of Thrones as a series than they were as Game of Thrones 
as a series. These fans did not represent all of Game of Thrones fans in the late years, but they did represent a good deal of the loudest ones. The ones that didn't care about the teleporting characters, drop subplots, the many character assassinations, bastardizations of the world, lore, and story, the people clapping their hands like drunk seals at the pretty visuals and nonsensical writing. I once said that the people who excused the poor rank of season 7 were the ones who allowed season 8 to come into existence as it did. Likewise, the people who kept excusing the terrible writing of ruining the Night King and the Prince that was promised indirectly or directly allow the destruction of literally everything else. Even though the series was already written at the time, it was the principle. The problem with Game of Thrones existed far before season 8 though, but it was the continued denial from certain fans, that being critics as well, that helped ensure the collapsing writing as D&D started drinking bleach on the race to get that sweet, sweet Disney Star Wars money. How'd that work out for you guys? <laughs> <laughs> Sensational. All the red flags were there. People were screaming them for years, yet they were all ignored. And when I mean red flags, I don't mean the people who make everything, regardless of context, a social media outrage post, like far too many do on Twitter, Tumblr, Reddit, etc, etc. I'm sorry, Cherish, I don't want to read your post on why you think pancakes is secretly racist. And Brett, 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 my dude, my dude making the car video. I don't care why you think French Toast is woke SJW propaganda. Please, both you and Cherish, shut the fuck up and bang already and just create the antichrist. The problem here though isn't just the fandom, because all fandoms are annoying in some way, shape, or form. The problem is that now studios and creators are well aware of how much audience investment can carry a franchise of inconsistent quality. Instead of trying to improve them, many franchises, from Terminator to Star Wars, Harry Potter, Jurassic Park, the DCEU, the MCU, and Star Wars again ironically, have fallen into the trend of leaning on audience investment instead of improving their quality. The problem here is that thanks to many disappointing, the problem for many studios and creators though, thanks to many disappointing, downright awful films, many audiences are slowly no longer willing to allow their investment to overlook the objective flaws and criticisms they have of franchises and studios. While social media may use fans as a scapegoat and also a cheerleader, for all the problems of the film industry, at the end of the day, fans are just another word for audience, which is just another word for customers. People blame fan entitlement for the degrading state of franchises and art and cinema, blah 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 television, yet it is studios creators, networks, conditioning fans, their audience, to accept less. While you may not be able to control your audience, they will do as they please, we all know that, even my own audience or the audiences of bigger franchises out there are the ones we build from the products we put out. If your content is mediocre, inconsistent, problematic, or etc., that will be what the audience will eventually reflect. Franchises are no different. Here's the thing, House of the Dragon had no built-in audience when it first came out. Unlike Rings of Power and or one of which is banking on the goodwill investment folks have in Lord of the Rings, and the other is banking on the domestic abusive relationship Star Wars have with Disney, all the goodwill for Game of Thrones was almost gone thanks to season 8. Even the folks that were still invested in the books, well, the ones we're never getting, I have made peace with the fact that I'll probably never see the Winds of Winter in my lifetime, in my children will never see A Dream of Spring in their lifetime, George R. R. I love us all, they were people at least excited a little bit for the series. For the series to work, HBO had to do something desperate, and that was a main defeat. HBO had to acknowledge, even if it was only indirectly from behind the scenes, that Game of Thrones was a failure, and it was their choices that led them to their failure. House of the Dragon brought the creator of A Song of Ice and Fire back, George R. R. Martin. They took their time with the scripts, the casting, the chemistry, the production, and did whatever they had to do for the show to be better than the later seasons of the Game of Thrones, to be better than even some of the early seasons in Game of Thrones in certain areas. The Game of Thrones franchise was saved because the people in charge realized they screwed up, that the brand loyalty of Game of Thrones, what literally had left, was not enough to carry House of the Dragon. So instead, they had to try, they had to push themselves like they had everything to lose, because they did. Many don't know this, but House of the Dragon was the second spinoff of Game of Thrones. The first one was Blood Moon, that only had a pilot that never saw the light of day and likely never will. So House of the Dragon, unless they wanted to end up like their sister series that never got off the ground, so House of the Dragon had to go above and beyond to prove it itself and justify its existence as the show nobody wanted or asked for. That's why House of the Dragon went from the series that no one cared about because of how bad the Game of Thrones flopped to people caring so much about the franchise that they are willing to give a second chance again. They are willing to watch a Game of Thrones spinoff about Jon Snow set after season 8. I'm gonna watch it too. Come on kitty cat, show me what you got. This is what other franchises need to realize. They need to realize that brand loyalty can and will only carry them so far. Brand loyalty isn't about the quality of the product, it's about being loyal to a brand regardless of quality. It's cheap, 
fleeting approval. This is what Star Wars needs. Instead of Disney Lucasfilm listening to people who sell their opinions for opportunities to getting good with Lucasfilm, or people who don't even understand storytelling or the franchise in the first place. This is what the MCU needs. Instead of listening to the screaming fanboys who only care about cameo orgies, Easter eggs, and making sure they show enough to get the next back from Disney. They need to stop pandering to the crowd who wants a repeat of No Way Home or something bigger than Endgame, who are only seeking the next thrill regardless of the story. This is what the DCEU, okay, the DC at this point just needs to be nuked because that universe is too far gone. Let's just watch the Batman and hop on Netflix to watch the 80s Rebel Moon. What I'm trying to say is that it is entirely possible for a franchise to not only return to its former glory and achieve a level of quality that made the audience fall in love with that franchise in the first place, it's possible to do even better. The only way they can though is to acknowledge that yes, they've screwed up, they've made mistakes, they stopped trying to do better, they've become dependent on brand loyalty, nostalgia, or are completely out of touch with what made them unique as a franchise in the first place and are just trying to copy the success of others. Honestly, I never thought I'd say this, but if you want to know what a franchise can do to save itself from themselves, all they have to do is look at the Game of Thrones franchise, look at House of the Dragon, and realizing that quality is a better horse to bet on than brand loyalty. House of the Dragon looked at the complaints people had about Game of Thrones, and they did everything in their power to improve from those mistakes. Even if you have no interest in House of the Dragon as a show, you have no interest in the Game of Thrones franchise at all. This level of commitment to improving one's quality is something every franchise should learn from. Thank you to everyone who made it to the end of this video. I appreciate you, your time, your views. Social media accounts are down below. If you liked today's video, how about you leave a like? If you want to see more videos from us, then hit that subscribe button. And if you want to support the channel, see more videos like this so I don't have to go back to OnlyFans and Frank to judge my life choices. I know you're doing it, Frank. How about becoming a part of our Patreon or a YouTube membership? It's all right here. It's easy. It's cheap. It's only $1 a month. But no matter what you do, please leave a comment. Tell me your thoughts on House of the Dragon or tell me your thoughts on other franchises you hope can come back from this weird dystopia state they're in. No matter what you do, I appreciate you for stopping by the channel. Have a good day, have a good evening, and have a good night. I'll see you for the next video.